Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with the North America Pack DLC for Planet Zoo. We are back at our uh, sandbox mini-series zoo where we've been collecting all of the DLC animals, well, for the most part. And uh, we're kicking things off with this North America Pack DLC with none other than the beaver. The beaver is one of two national animals of Canada, so yes, I am at least a little partial over here, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, but yeah, as of 1975, the beaver was the uh, uh, national animal of, uh, of, of Canada, and then I think it was like 2002 or something, the Canadian horse got added in, if memory serves me right. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I am extremely excited for this enclosure that we're building today because uh, I wanted to, as is almost always the case with me, I wanted to try something that was a little maybe technically challenging, maybe a little uncertain while building it. Uh, and then, you know, we try and solve any problems uh, after the animals were actually introduced into the space. Uh, but. I can very happily say there were no problems. <laughs> it's uh, it, it really is. It really does make me uh, quite happy uh, that there are no uh, no issues with this enclosure because we do try to build a uh, sort of a dam, you know, very sort of iconic beaver paraphernalia, I suppose. You know, when you think about the beaver, I think on average many people think about a dam, um, but also the uh, the lodge itself. And the way the lodge works is pretty interesting. Uh, and I wasn't sure if we'd be able to build it. I wasn't sure if we would have the parts to build, you know, either the sort of dam portion of it or the, uh, the lodge portion of it. But thanks to the African log pieces that are available in the game, we are actually able to build a decently tightly packed um, sort of forms in the right shapes that we needed as well. Now, some of the sizes and stuff you'll see are going to be exaggerated. For example, I mean, even over here, we're kind of exaggerating the shape and the size of the river and how suddenly it kind of comes to an end. But uh, but, but that's kind of necessary to make sure everything is visible, I think, and, and, and workable. Uh, by the way, just trying to build the uh, path over here very subtly, I suppose, in the shape of a beaver tail. I don't know if you're familiar with beaver tail, but it is a type of uh, pastry dish, which is absolutely delicious when you get some hazelnut spread on it and oh my god you make it in there's like all kinds of different ways to top it but it's uh it's a it's a pastry beaver tails look it up uh it's a it's a brand as well but i believe it's generically just a, a type of kind of pastry that you uh oh god getting hungry just thinking about it but it's delicious stuff and i was like you know what how can i not give a nod to beaver tails if we're making a beaver um enclosure so I thought we'd do it in the uh, with with a with path as opposed to something too blatant or too like that was going to be unnatural anyway the path. So I figured we'd uh, we kind of lean into it a little bit, right? Uh, but yeah, here you can see I put down a couple of trees. I put down a couple of the big logs. I'm really concerned actually that I wouldn't be able to build what I wanted to build. However, you know, right there at the beginning when you search wood, you've got those African branches and they work wonderfully. I mean, the color is a little different than the uh, Scots pine, and it's a little bit maybe darker, uh, but I don't think that's so much of a problem when you have enough of it and you've got enough stuff surrounding it as well. You've got like the shadows and all that coming through. Yeah, I think it works quite nicely. And again, trying to be somewhat particular without being sort of overbearingly particular, I suppose, about how these things interlock and how they work together. And basically the way the, um, the, way the lodge works for a uh, beaver is they'll have this like Okay, so first of all, it's important to note that there are multiple steps to having the water level drop over here. What we're building on the right there is the lodge. That's actually where these beavers will rest, where they'll live, where their kits will grow up. Um, some of this stuff which we'll learn together when I go through the Zoopedia after this time lapse. Uh, but that's, that's the living space, right? And then you'll have a bit of a food store in this little space that we're adding water to right now. And that's where there'll be a bit of a food store. And then the next hump over to the left over here is where the uh, dam will be that actually reduces the water level. Now this lodge, typically the way it works is it's fully enclosed on either end is my understanding. Uh, but on the sort of outside, um, so the river's coming from the right over here. On the left side, which we'll call the outside, they'll actually have access from underwater into the lodge. And I tried to recreate that, and I was hoping that they'd be able to, to use that, um, but I'm not sure if the game would actually allow, you know, for that kind of uh, 
underwater maneuverability because it's a very tight space underneath. I am pleased that we were able to build this like this lodge in a relatively accurate fashion where yeah, you've got this like mound shape thing uh, closed on one end from where the river is coming and then open to where the river is going, allowing an animal to uh, sneak in from underneath. And we'll actually take a look at that more closely after the time lapse is done when we're just taking a bit of a sort of mini tour before we uh, we uh, move on to adding the animals. And over here again, adding that second step, I suppose, where the water actually kind of gets dammed up and then the water level reduces moving forward. I, I find this stuff so fascinating about the beaver. Um, such meticulous and hard workers, very impressive stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, if you're gonna make a beaver enclosure, in, in my opinion, again, for me, it was like, if I'm gonna make a beaver enclosure, uh, because I have always been so fascinated by beaver dams and just not just the, uh, the the technical aspect of the dam, but also the mentality of it, I suppose, like the, the um, just like the, the why of it, you know, the questions we ask nature without necessarily getting answers. Um, so I was like, I gotta, I gotta pay some, uh, some, some respects to that. I mean, while over here, Kind, just a, a subtle nod, the most subtlest of nods to uh, old sort of forts and uh, and the walls around old uh, old forts that uh, would be where you know maybe a trapper would perhaps uh, return to with their with their beavers and all that. Beaver fur uh, and, and beaver pelt was a very major part of uh, Canadian history. Um, so I thought you know okay well let's. Uh, Let's touch on that a little bit. Let's not overdo it. I thought I'd give like a subtle touch. Now the decorative element up over here is entirely, you know, it's not, there's not a historical reference or anything over here. I didn't want to go too hard on that reference, uh, but I thought a, a subtle nod wouldn't be uh, the end of the world. And also I figured this could be maybe, I wasn't sure at this time if guests could enter the habitat, but they can. Um, so in my mind, I was like, well, we'll make this so that it's an option for guests to enter over here, even if it's just to like take a step in and be inside the enclosure. Uh, but yeah, pretty pleased with how this looks. I mean, it's not, uh, <laughs> this thing is adorable. Whoever, whoever the illustrator is for this, by the way, just, oh my God, amazing. I love it. I wish I could have a little like uh, patch or pin or something just to, just to have that thing. That thing's, that's amazing. It's absolutely adorable. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't want to like uh, go kind of overbearingly into the, uh, the history there. That was one of my initial thoughts was that I would have a little fort to the side and touch on the whole beaver pelt thing. But then I was like, you know what? No, why, why not? Uh, why not focus on the animal's own capabilities? And then again, just like you yeah, have a couple of nods to, uh, to, to the history there and, and to the modern cultural kind of, uh, references as well, such as the, uh, the beaver tail, uh, pastry and all that kind of stuff. I had a lot of fun with this enclosure. I had a lot of fun just, uh, Kind of getting the focus on on uh, on, on Canada again it doesn't uh, doesn't often get uh, too much or enough attention. I don't know, however you want to term it. So it was it was a lot of fun just even to be able to talk about it <laughs> right now. Uh, but yeah, now trying to finally get some of these uh, pieces in. There are some unique beaver pieces. We'll touch on them uh, after the time lapse is done. But you can see the watermelon over here. You can see uh, some old pieces as well, of course, like the bedding and the little uh, the bedding that floats on the water. Those are all old pieces. But at the end over here. Uh, Again, you'll see it again later. Uh, is is a new sort of a like splash park kind of a thing for the beaver. Uh, very curious to see how uh, how our little furry friends uh, play with that, of course. Uh, but otherwise, just trying to break up the uh, the train a little bit over here. It felt a little too plain, a little too uh, monotonous. So getting some more rocks in, trying to break up the uh, the, the level drops as well with some more rockiness. I'm gonna add some VFX too, just to bring a bit more life to this enclosure because I did feel like it. it desperately needed some uh, some movement when the animal's not there. And I felt like the uh, VFX over here, they work quite nicely if placed correctly. And we can actually hide the little uh, generation points, the little black cones uh, underneath the uh, the wood. So that felt really good to me in, in, in the sense that it felt uh, appropriate. I wish you could, I mean, this is a ridiculous ask, but I wish you could like adjust the speed of it, you know? So it didn't always feel like a rushing river and, and maybe like a calmer flow or something. I also wish you could adjust the direction of the flow of rough water, but you can't. Um, so the water is actually kind of moving in the wrong direction in, in this enclosure, but uh, it's okay. Uh, now again, just adding some more trees and, and just taking a look at visually how the space feels, making some minor adjustments to uh, floating trees and things like that, but just trying to, yeah, get an idea of how the space feels, looks, if I like the vibe of it. And you know what? I'm really quite pleased. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Of course, let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the enclosure, how you might suggest I make it better. But apart from that, I'm going to go back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and I am really enjoying 
this new uh, space over here. Honestly, I was a little worried because, again, those of you that are following my uh, franchise mode playthrough right now, the Let's Play, uh, for the last little while, we haven't done a time lapse, so I was not sure how smoothly it would go, but honestly, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, space overall. I might add some more vegetation, some more trees, I guess, specifically around the uh, sort of negative space around the outside over here but first i wanted to see how our animals actually felt in this space you know if i was already doing a little bit too much i think they'll be fine you know i mean considering the uh, raw material they need for some of the work they're known for um but uh, but but i just wanted to make sure before i went ahead and uh, put it down put put down uh, too many trees and, 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 and made this place uh, too busy and then it would be difficult to kind of backtrack uh, if they didn't like how many trees I put down but you know what? overall I feel like there's a couple of good uh, scenic spots in this uh, in this enclosure I wasn't sure exactly how we would build these dams and I was I'm sure I mentioned this during the time lapse, so I hope I'm not repeating myself or at least not doing it too much, but I wasn't sure how we'd go about uh, building these dams and I'm pretty pleased um, using those African branch pieces to our advantage over here because they're relatively small and uh, able to get that curvature, able to get that interlocking. Yeah, pretty pleased with uh, how that's turned out. And then we do have this, uh, where'd it go? Underwater uh, plant feeder as well that I'd like to see in action. I mean, yeah, sure, our guests won't be able to see it in action, but we will. And uh, in this zoo, that's our, our priority is, is seeing things uh, as long as we can see them. It, it's all good. <laughs> now, I'm pretty pleased with this uh, overall structure and layout. I'm just curious to see if the beavers will actually use this space appropriately. Now, a real dam doesn't actually have, I mean, at least as far as I know, Maybe I'm mistaken. I did a little bit of research as to how uh, these dams are actually built and, and what kind of form they take and, and their inner workings because I realized, you know, I knew beavers made dams, but I didn't know how exactly they were laid out and how they functioned. So this seems to sort of parrot um, quite a few diagrams and cross sections. But of course, you know, it would be closed on this end as well. However, I've left it open so that our guests could perhaps come through and uh, and actually see what's going on. So let's move this tree out of the way as well to that effect. I want to make sure our guests are able to, yeah, kind of get a peek through the glass over here and see exactly how um, beavers are basically able to uh, not, not come in from this side. You know, the uh, the high side, it seems, based on the diagrams I've seen, are closed. But the uh, the not the low side because it's level just after the first one it's after the second one that you typically see a dip in level but so between that dip and the uh the the original sort of origin point of the water i guess you'll have this section where the beaver will be able to swim underneath and then go in to its little uh i mean i don't, I don't know what to call it we'll call it hard shelter for for lack of a better term right now but it's able to go in from underneath from from underwater basically uh so i tried to mo model that and, and, and mimic that a bit but I don't think this is smooth enough for them to actually climb up this way. I'd be surprised if they're even sort of programmed to, you know, go under... I, I, look, there's a... It's a huge dice roll for that to even happen, you know, uh, for them to to, to, <laughs> to decide to come under here and then come up. I just wanted to make sure they had access to the hard shelter. I didn't want to build something separate or extra, so I decided to make this cross section, not just to allow our uh, guests to see inside, but also the beaver should hopefully be able to walk through over here and, and uh, take a little nap and lie down over here. But uh, we'll see. I mean, why keep talking about it? Why not uh, bring those beavers in, right? Well, before we bring them in, I do want to, of course, take a look at the uh, Zoopedia entry and uh, see what we can learn from uh, from Zoopedia. Now, the first order of business, actually, with regards to Zoopedia is I'm going to have to mention just how much just how much better it is uh, in terms of searchability and, and just usability in general. Uh, honestly, kudos. I, I, I have to say to the dev team for uh, continually improving a feature that, truth be told, they really don't they really don't have to. I mean, when I say don't have to, I don't mean it can't use any improvement. I've mentioned countless times during our franchise playthrough that I feel like there's room for improvement, uh, but they don't have to in the sense that it's out there, people are playing it, people are enjoying it, so they don't, it's not a necessity, but it's a nice thing to do, and they've gone ahead and done it, and honestly, it just, I, like, I gotta give kudos where it's due, right? You can now actually search animals based on their type, based on their continent, and based on their conservation status. So if you get one of those challenges where you're just like, oh, it has to be critically endangered animals only, boom, all of a sudden you can see, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And if you want to make a new zoo of your own that specifically is, you know, for one type of conservation status or one continent or what have you, it, you, you can filter it all very easily and just 
good stuff. Just fantastic stuff. That's the next level up from just having the search bar. This is definitely the next level up. And then you've also got uh, these options over here to just flip quickly to the market, to the research tab, and to your management. Now, actually, okay, I'm really curious over here. Bear with me, folks, because I am curious. Uh, if I click manage over here, does it automatically? Oh my God, are you kidding me? It automatically filters it? Oh, that's... Okay. Look. Some of you who are familiar with the channel will know I used to do a lot of UI, UX stuff before I got into YouTube. And uh, that's just amazing. That's just great stuff. I'm so happy to see it. Honestly, I, uh, it, it's great. <laughs> but enough talk about that. Let's talk about the North American beaver. The Castor canadensis. It is the national animal of Canada. So, uh... I do wonder if the if the Canadian over there has anything to do with that. I, I actually I actually don't know. But it is it is our national animal. The North American beaver is a large species of rodent that lives in the temperate woodland and riverine areas of the USA and Canada. The North American beaver has a double coat, meaning its fur has a surface layer of long, coarse hairs and an undercoat of shorter, finer hairs. This coat gives the beaver's fur a coarse appearance. The beaver may be brown, red, or tan in appearance and have small ears and eyes, a black nose high on the snout, and large pronounced front teeth. North American beavers have a head body length of 29 to 36 inches and a tail length of 7.9 to 14 inches. They weigh between 24 and 70.4 pounds. The North American beaver is not endangered. The population in wild is between 10 million and 15 million. They are of least concern and uh, the beaver fur trade is one of the key points of history uh in uh, in well in canadian history so uh i wonder if any of that will be touched on with regards to the fun facts or anything like that but uh this is actually a relatively short description over here uh normally we we get you know at least a couple paragraphs um i'm, I'm very partial to these guys because uh, well because of the reason stated earlier but also because i mean look how cute they are <laughs> so you know i hope they get plenty of love uh otherwise but let's see natural habitat of course we've got a very widespread uh canada usa mexico taiga temperate and grassland and look at this improvement as well i mean come on right like you can now actually see what you're looking for as far as your ideal um ideal uh population count and you can adjust accordingly now i'm a little worried that we maybe don't have enough deep water uh, so we'll see about that and we might have to adjust our uh, our river that's on the high the highest point we might have to adjust that so uh, we'll will we uh, we'll be okay I think 90 90 90 90 meters squared is is not all that much uh, species data group size excluding juveniles is two to eight up to eight males up to eight females a male bachelor group size is two and the female bachelor group size is two as well with a dominant system where parents are leading the family i don't think we've read that for any animal yet not the ones in planet zoo at least parents are leading the family okay interesting mating system is monogamous relation with humans is neutral and guests can enter the habitat so i was kind of tempted to make this a walkthrough and we can still adjust it uh just really quickly um i did make this little gate kind of a thing over here and i was thinking oh what if we make this into a walkthrough or maybe not a walkthrough but you know you can like kind of like step in but not necessarily go all the way through it so that option is there uh but that's uh that's just something to consider I, I wasn't sure if i wanted to make it a walkthrough or not um it adds it adds a lot from a sort of technical perspective, but I wanted to have all this negative space uh, and room for these beavers to roam. And, and uh, we can always, again, go back and adjust it if we really feel uh, strongly about it. But yes, humans, humans, uh, guests can enter the habitat. Size on average is 32.8 inches long for both males and females. Life expectancy is 15 years for both males and females. And weight is 47.3 pounds for males and females matching averages across the board basically sexual maturity is at two years sterility is at death number of offspring per mating event is one to five gestation and incubation is two months interbirth is 12 and reproduction in captivity is difficult okay interesting we'll have our work cut out for us i suppose with getting some uh, baby beavers but um you know i'm sure i'm sure over the course of covering this entire dlc on the channel I'm sure we'll get some baby beavers and we'll be able to take them uh, to take a look at them. Uh, folks, I want to mention as well, of course, if you are enjoying this coverage on the channel, if you'd like to see more Planet Zoo and more of this North American DLC pack uh, on the channel, please don't hesitate to let me know. 
leave a like and a comment down below. It does make a big difference in just how I approach content on the channel. Now, social needs. The North American beaver lives in family groups of a mated dominant pair, their young adult offspring, and the litter of kits from that year. Fair enough. Reproduction. Male and female beavers are monogamous and will usually mate between December and March each year, although mating peaks occur in January and February. In preparation for the mating season, male and female beavers will build a lodge. A lodge is a mound of woody material that is found in water. The entrance to the lodge is usually underwater. The center of the lodge is hollow and above water. That's exactly what we've built there as part of the dam. We've got the, uh, the, 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 the lodge where you can kind of get in from underwater. So I'm actually, it's kind of nice that that's been touched on over here because it ties directly into what we've built. Now, just as a, 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 a word of warning or a heads up, I guess I don't read Zoopedia before I build the habitat. I go by my assumptions about the animal and then I come through and I read the uh, the Zoopedia entry. At most, I'll like take a look at their like space requirements or their, uh, um, what's it called, like biome requirements. So I put the right plants down, but otherwise I like to be surprised by this kind of stuff. So it's nice when things match up. Anyway, the center of the lodge is hollow and above water. During the mating season, the male beaver remains very close to the female. He will smell the female's urine to monitor when she is fertile. Beavers mate in water. The male will circle the female before climbing on top of her and copulating with her. The female may be submerged for much of the process. I wonder if... I'm curious if that will be an animation in uh, in this game because, you know, there are mating animations and while they're not entirely uh, accurate animations in the game, uh, they are, you know, when the game makes such a point of it being underwater, I wonder if they will uh, show the usual kind of like cuddling and stuff that the, that the animations show, except they'll show it happening underwater and if there's like a unique animation for it. So we'll try and keep an eye out for that as well over the course of our coverage of this uh, DLC. Um, so after a gestation period of approximately three months, the female will give birth to one to four kits in the central part of the lodge. Kits begin swimming a few days after birth and begin eating solid food by two weeks old. They are fully weaned by three months old. Kits reach sexual maturity at around two years old, but are unlikely to reproduce for the first time until they are three years old. Okay. Kits are likely to leave or be chased away from their natal group by their parents when they're between 20 months and two years old. Although some beavers have been known to stay with their natal group until they are four years old. Oh, I'm very curious what the, uh, where the like exception comes from. Dispersing young adult beavers will move several kilometers away from their parents' lodge and search for an unattached, unrelated beaver of the opposite sex. These two beavers will then build their own lodge and start their own family. That's really, uh, it's really interesting. I, I don't think I've, uh, I've seen quite a dominant system like that in, uh, in like all my reading of Zoopedia and just in thinking outside of it. Interesting. All right. Very cool. Research status. Of course, we're in the uh, sandbox mode, so we have everything already. There is the beaver pool that is new for the beaver, and I'm really excited to see it in action. We do have the beaver pool in. We also have the melon feeder and the underwater plant feeder. So lots of good stuff to check out over here. But the fun facts, let's see. The North American beavers can remain underwater for up to 15 minutes. Okay. Pretty impressive. Fun fact number two, the North American beavers can recognize their relatives even if they're born several years apart and have never previously met. Excuse me. Excuse me? <laughs> wait, how? Wait, 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 what? That's so cool. But how? Like, I would understand if it was, like, several years apart, and, and then they recognize each other. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But, but also, having never previously met, what is the, uh, the, like, is there a scent? Does every beaver family have its unique scent, or... Now that's a fun fact. All right, that's a fun fact. I am very curious about that one. That's wild. Okay. Now, fun fact number three, North American beavers may slap their tail on the surface of water repeatedly in response to danger. Yeah, I do uh, know that one already. Fun fact number four, North American beavers are known to store food branches underwater near their lodge, so they have food throughout the winter. Yes, a lot of the time there will be a little like uh, food storage right outside the lodge. It'll be like you've got your, uh, uh, if, if memory serves me right, it'll be like you've got your... Uh, your lodge, you've got a little food store, like roughly over here or like closer to this. And then you've got, you know, your, your water adjustment, <laughs> uh, water level adjustment. Um, but uh, fun fact number five, the North American beaver secretes an oil called castorium, which it uses to waterproof its fur. It can be used in perfume and food production. I am 
vaguely familiar with this this is a this is i've known i've known that they uh had this oil that they they would use to waterproof fur but uh, i did not know about the perfume and food production uh, aspects of castorium though i though i read that and i think about like castor oil <laughs> but uh, interesting okay cool uh, honestly fun fact number two is the most funnest of facts over here can recognize their relatives even if they are born several years apart and have never previously met. That's wild. Now, no interspecies enrichment for the uh, beaver, but uh, that's okay. They'll uh, they'll enrich their own lives all on their own as we add some North American beavers. Tevin over here for 60 conservation credits. Ooh, I mean, again, it's unlimited. <laughs> it's, it's sandbox. Let's go ahead and get uh, Ava over here. Uh, and let's go ahead and get... I mean, I guess we can have quite a few of them, can't we? Let's get Tevin... Why don't we get all of them? Monica and Yates. Because it was... Uh, if we go to Zoopedia here... Oh, uh, there's no Zoopedia button over here, is there? Hmm. Okay. That would be nice. Uh, Zoopedia over here, if I recall correctly, was 2 to 8, right? Up to 8 males, up to 8 females. So why don't we go ahead and, uh, yeah, drop in 4. Uh, over to our animals. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, actually. Yes! Oh, that's so good. Honestly, that is so convenient. Amazing. All right, let's go ahead and move them all. Uh, invalid destination. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> like I said, it's been some time since I've uh, since I've done um, done the time lapse. Since we've had to add a new enclosure to our uh, franchise zoo, so uh, pardon my uh, my error there. But pop you down there, and now we can go ahead and get these guys in here. I was uh, I was like, no, 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 no. Don't tell me I've made a horrible mistake. I have not. Hopefully that's enough room for them to kind of sneak by. I don't know how big they're actually going to be in relation to the enclosure itself, but let's hit play. Let's find out as they arrive over here. Uh, I'm really excited to see how they interact with this space, and I'm really curious to see if they are actually able to, uh, to yeah, get in over here. Because I'm pretty pleased with how this space looks. I'm, uh, I mean, maybe this tree is blocking my shot right now, so I'll go ahead and pull it back a little bit, like to over here. Down a little bit, there we go. But I'm, I'm really quite pleased with how... Uh, how all this looks the vfx and everything and and yeah i would have liked to have more variety for the uh branches let's call them and i would have liked to have like some smaller pieces that i could like kind of pop in there but unfortunately no such uh, elements exist it would have been nice for the dlc to have some of those parts and pieces come as a uh, as a part of the dlc just to allow you to make more um fitting spaces i guess again it would all be solved if we just had a scale button for uh for for uh for the advanced building tools Man, honestly, this is quite serene. I figured me talking over it was taking away from the serenity, so I, I thought I'd give you a second with it. And on this side, of course, we have the... Uh, I, I was wondering if I wanted to add some foam over here as well, but I think I think we're fine this way. I think we're fine this way. I wish we could control the direction of the water, though. It looks like it's flowing backwards, which is not ideal. But yeah, you know, really pleased with this space overall. Really quite pleased with this space overall. And I'm also curious if they're able to uh, get into this thing with a little gap that I've given them over here. It might not be enough. We'll see once they arrive, which I think is happening right about now. Wow, perfect timing. Here we go. Here we go. Moment of truth. How, how big are these guys? <laughs> On you go. Oh my god. Not too big, but they're very adorable. Oh my god. Even when they're in this strange... Uh, combined form. Okay, you know what? They might not have... Oh, no, it looks like they're moving. Of course, they can get into the water. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Look at this guy. Oh my god, so cute. <laughs> I am... I am so tremendously pleased right now. I am so tremendously pleased right now. Oh, look at that. What about the other guys? They coming through? Yeah, looks like they're waddling about. Oh, look at that! Wow, they can go real fast! Oh my god! Oh, lost them in the, lost them in the tall grass. <laughs> wow, okay, I did not realize they could move so quickly. Where'd you go? Where, where'd you go? I lost the beaver. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I completely lost track of that beaver. This is great. This is great. Honestly, that's just fantastic. 
They look so cute. The eye, the, the whites of their eyes are... Oh, that was just, uh, I think, because of the angle over here. Too much light, maybe. Popped out a lot. That white, like, pops out a lot, but... Come on, buddy. You're gonna shake it off. You're gonna... Oh, look at that. Oh, that's, a, that's really good. Look at how the feet... Oh, wow, that's really good. Have they made some changes to... To how feet line up to the terrain? That was really good. That was really impressive. Maybe we just got lucky there, but that, that was some of the best um, foot-to-ground alignment I've seen in, in, in Planet Zoo. Oh, there we go. Somewhere in here is our thumbnail, isn't there? Come on. <laughs> Somewhere in here. Okay. I'm plenty pleased. I hope you're pleased with the beavers as well, but I think the moment of truth for the beavers themselves, you know, are they pleased? Let's check. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm, I'm, again, I'm happy, but are these guys happy? Yep, looks like their train is all good. Deep water they're, they're pleased with. Plants good. Oh, they're not a fan of the Scots Pine. I could have sworn I said North America when I picked it. You know what? It's not making them too unhappy, so it's fine, but I guess I, I guess I made a mistake there. And of course, they have the uh, bonding status uh, you know, element as well to their... To their mating process. Sorry, got distracted by the uh, underwater beavers. Oh my god, they're adorable. Oh no, what's happening here? Wait, are they... No. They weren't mating, they're... No, okay, they're both males. We'll have that guy selected, there we go. Just want to watch these guys in action a little bit. That's always... I don't know. I was going to say that's always the best part of uh, when new animals get added, but I don't know if that's true. What is the best part when new animals get added? I love, like, learning about them, building them new spaces. I love uh, exploring their, like, Zoopedia entries. I love watching them in action as well, of course, but I don't know what the best part is. I don't know. What's your favorite part of, uh, of a new animal getting added? I'm actually curious. And moment of truth for our little uh, lodge here. Beautiful. This works exactly as I'd, I'd hoped. Again, they're not necessarily able to get in from underwater. Uh, but they are. if they were able to, if they were able to get underwater and in, then they would be able to climb up here, which is a surprise, actually. So uh, we'll, we'll see if that behavior actually takes place or if I need to make an adjustment over here to, to make that happen. I mean, maybe... You know what? It works nicely as it is right now. I don't want to break what isn't, uh, or fix what isn't broken. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it as is for now, I think. Where'd the little guy go? Just saw one over here. We've got to keep an eye on, uh, on this little, uh, thing as well. Oh, wait, actually, hold on. Can they? Oh, wait, I don't know. Are you about to play here? This camera. Moving a little too fast for me. Oh, my God, you're so cute. All right. Stay focused, stay focused. Okay, looks like they can, in fact, get in over here, so that's good. Oh my god, he's just sitting! Hold on, wait, not you, you, he's just sitting. I didn't know they did this. He's just sitting. Ah, uh, <laughs> What? I have no words. I'm, I'm just, I'm just entertained. I have no words. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, not the best spot to sit in, but you know what? Hey, whatever you like, buddy. That's great. I didn't know they did this. Oh my God. <laughs> so cute. I knew I'd uh, be very happy. Well, the addition of the beavers, but uh, I didn't realize I'd be this happy. Sorry, I can't help myself. The, like the nose wiggles, the little jitteriness. It's got to be such a challenge to animate these animals. I know, I know I say it every time we get a new animal and we're spending some time with them, but it's got to be such a challenge, you know? And look at the level of detail on, like, the tail and stuff as well. Ha, <laughs> detail. That one was unintentional, I promise you. But just, like, the, the, the texture and stuff, it's so good. Oh, here we go, back into the water. And look at that. I, I do feel like they've changed how...
feet line up with the uh, with the ground. I, I might be wrong, of course. Uh, I'll go back and, and chase those patch notes, perhaps, but uh, feels different. The underwater view is just excellent. <laughs> like this floating log, basically. Floating loaf of bread. So I'm curious about... Well, I can't miss anything here. I am curious about them using the underwater feeder. And that little playground thing over there as well. Now, do they spend most of their time in water or outside of water? I'm curious. Come on. Out you go. Come on. No? Alright. <laughs> Buddy's rushing him. What is that behavior? Oh, swimming in land. Interesting. They look like they were, like, chinning the ground. Um, I don't know if that's a term for it, but again, I, I have a pet rabbit, right? And, and rabbits tend to rub their um, uh, dewlap on things to claim ownership, and it looked very similar to that. You about to sit down? Oh my god. Did you hear that? <laughs> like a little honk. The fur is so good. I prefer how the dry fur looks to the wet fur. Always have. Oh, off you go. Oh, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> They're so fast! They're so fast! You coming in here? No, I guess not. I thought that was gonna be a dive. Come on. No. Just waiting. No guests over here just quite yet. They haven't uh, discovered the, the wonder of the beaver yet. Maybe once they have some kits, we'll be, uh, we'll be all set. You gonna perhaps get in there? No? There's a couple of things I definitely want to see in action, but uh, I don't know if we will. Oh, look at that. This is actually a really nice piece. It's got a little waterfall thing going on. They've used a lot of the game pieces, I think, to, like, the existing game pieces to build it. But you see how, like, being able to scale some of that stuff down would have, would, would help tremendously? But the same thing except scale down. I don't think it actually is. These are, these are different shapes, but you, for, for players, arguably, we could maybe do that. Oh, yeah, I've got some water runoff, like, over here as well, by the way. You can see the water comes through a little bit. And I was actually okay with that. I kind of liked how unclean it was. Feels a bit more like, well, it was natural, I guess. I just love the way they walk, the big steps. Um, but yeah, the uh, pretty pleased with the overall space. I mean, I guess I could add more trees, but I, at the same time, I'm glad I didn't add more Scots pines because evidently I I was mistaken. I thought I had uh, oh, you know what? I had the I think I had Taiga selected, but not North America, and that's my bad. That's my bad, obviously. But uh, they're not too displeased by it, so that's okay. Come on. I'm so, like, invested in, in them just moving around. Oh, this is great. Whoops. Coming up in the middle and stuff as well. It's nice to see them have access to everything, right? <laughs> you can see their tongue. I'm gonna make it all the way back over here, I assume. Probably gonna flip around, actually. Have they bonded yet? Oops. No, still no bond. Takes time, doesn't it? Takes time. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Chilling over here, Just chilling over here. I'm I'm absolutely in love. You guys are so cute. I've always loved beavers. There was that one, uh, there was that one video I once saw of a lady who was uh, f like basically fostering a beaver, um, and as it came of age, it like uh, would start ripping at everything in the house, like the baseboards and everything, because it's a beaver and it's trying to like build a dam and stuff, uh, and just the cutest thing, scurrying around, picking stuff up, 
building itself a little uh, dam with no river or anything to speak of. It was a great video. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, I guess if you search YouTube for like, you know, adopt or like baby beaver foster home, maybe you'll find it. I think. So, so, so good. So well done. So well done. Oh. <laughs> I, I will never get over what they look like when they're running. Can I have some watermelon? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so good. The uh, transition on the watermelon, a little less so, but like, you know, it takes a little like sniff. Puts his uh, hand in there. No, he's not going to have another bite. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, they took a little sniff, put put his hands in there, like scoops him up, basically. Pretty good. And you know what, actually? Uh, if this was just a little bit smaller, it would be fine. Like, if, they, if, if both of these were, like, the same size or similar sizes, I think that would look nice. It would look like they've actually, you know, taken a chunk out and, and eaten it. It's so cute. Keeping an eye on that thing back there as well, because we saw Buddy run away, but I don't think he's actually gone to play. I don't think I'll ever get over how fast they move. That is so quick. I would be terrified. Can you imagine just, like, going out for a walk, like, for a hike or something, and then this thing, like, <laughs> like, scurries by you at that speed? Like, what was that? <laughs> Makes me think of the movie Zombievers. It's like a C-grade, straight-to-stream, you know, crappy movie. Zombievers, I think you can put together what it's about. But yeah, I guess that would be more terrifying than I gave it credit back in the day when I watched it. Alright, folks. I think uh, I think this is maybe where we're going to call it. Uh, we have some time yet before we have these guys bond. But once they do, hopefully we'll see some kits come through and we'll, we'll be able to hang out with some baby beavers, as I was saying earlier. Uh, but so far, so good. I'm very pleased with what I've seen so far in terms of the general adorableness factor. I'm pleased as, as well with like the space just working in general. I feel like, uh, well, I was concerned about, you know, them not being able to get, you know, in over here, but they are. We haven't seen them in here yet, but, uh, but they can get in here and it does cover their, uh, hard shelter needs if memory serves me right. So we're, cause I didn't see any like red flags or yellow flags and, uh, that's, that's typically the warning sign, right? So, uh. So I think we're actually okay in terms of uh, overall functionality and, and, and chasing some level of technical uh, difficulty, you can call it, I suppose. But uh, but yeah, really quite pleased with how the space is looking, how the space is feeling, and uh, how these animals are, are looking and acting as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment. As always, it makes a very big difference. And just let me know what you guys are interested in watching on the channel, what I should do more or less of, how I should go about doing it. Again, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll be familiar with the drill. It does really make a big difference. And if you're new to the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe for more Planet Zoo content as well as other strategy gaming, management gaming, and tycoon gaming content as well. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is right around the corner. I definitely cannot wait to get my grubby paws on that, but plenty more besides as well, of course. Uh, folks, I do hope you uh, have a good time with today's episode uh, again any feedback any thoughts any opinions feel free to share them in the comments down below i do read them all and i do try to take them all into account as well when possible but folks on that note a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis y'all keep us alive and running smoothly and of course a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching until next time cheers <laughs>